schon einmal hat das Schildhorn erobert. Jetzt landet er wieder mit dem Heli auf dem Piz Gloria, der George Lazenby. Der Filmwelt besser bekannt als... Bond. Damon Bond. Let me out of here. Und er kommt nicht allein. Der Heli fügt wertvolle Fracht auf 3000 Meter hoch. Der John Glenn, fünfmaliger Bond-Regisseur. Der Vic Armstrong, einziger Stuntman, der James Bond und Indiana Jones war. Und Bondine, Bondine, Bondine. Fabulous beauties. All of them dolls. Everyone different. Got... Die Geschichten um ausschweifende Partynächte von 1968 sind in Mürre legendär. Die Filmcrew soll jede Nacht durchgeführt haben. Und dabei sind auch ein paar sogenannte Bond-Babys gezeugt worden. They weren't mine. They weren't mine. <lacht> uh, uh, no, there was a lot of girls around. There was the Bond girls themselves. And I, I find there's a lot of attractive women here. And why is that? It was, it was a pretty wild party town, I must say. I know when we shot the car chase down on the ice rink down in Steckelberg, we'd go to work at four o'clock in the afternoon, which gave you the whole day to ski. And we'd go to work at four, and we'd come home at two o'clock, and we'd go straight to the Inferno nightclub and party till four or five or six, and then go to sleep for a couple of hours and go skiing and go back to work. It was idyllic lifestyle. Zurück zur Arbeit müssen jetzt alle normal und auf dem Schildhorn ihre Abdrücke hinterlassen. I haven't really thought of it yet, but I think it's, um, I'm rather proud to be a part of something like that. And, and not only that, is to be in Berlin and Mountain in Switzerland, which I think is absolutely great. So werden alle Beteiligten vom Bond-Film für immer ein Teil vom Bond-Berg auf dem Walk of Fame. The Walk of Fame. <lacht> Dabei haben sich alle ihren Ehrenplatz auf dem Grad im Berner Oberland zuerst müssen verdienen. Der Regisseur mit der spektakulären Lawinenaktion. And the final thing, uh, there were three bombs left, and I just said, oh yeah, drop them up that big expanse we haven't touched yet. And next thing is all hell let's break loose, and half the mountain came down, and we all got blown away and covered and what have you. But fortunately, we survived. After all, wasn't it more fun to just blow up things as a second unit director? Oh, absolutely. You know, to blow, to blow things up was um, was always fun. You know, sometimes you lost the hair, the hair on your leg. The stuntman with the walkhalsige Bond action. At the end of that ski chase, he, he uh, has a crash and slides over the top of the, the cliff there down above Steckelberg. I remember doing that with a cable wrapped around my ankle, and uh, it was quite dramatic because as I got to the edge and slid over the edge, about three foot of snow fell off the edge, so I fell another three foot further and was just hanging by my ankle. That was pretty scary. George Lazenby. Und der Star vom Film, in dem er 47 Jahre später immer noch auf James Bond angesprochen wird. Uh, what's the question you've been asked most after you played 007? What was it like being 007? It was usually the question. You usually answer. It was tiring. <laughs> I worked night and day. I'd be uh, up at daybreak, working all day, and then at night time you go out and people will be asking you questions, what's it like being James Bond? Dabei, bei diesem Einsatz auf dem Schild, dann kann der Lesen wie das endlich zeigen, ist seine einzige Heimwaffe, sein Humor. Don't put it in front of my face. <laughs> hey, I've got a heart attack coming on. Uh oh, I'm going to have a bump in my pants. So, the The interrogation scene, that's what everybody is talking about. It's probably going down in Bond movie history as first gay scene ever. Was it difficult to play? I don't see it as a gay scene. I see it as a, a poker a poker scene where both characters are playing a very uh, intense poker, poker game of how to dismantle the opponent. And uh, within that, it, It includes everything. Let's go. Well, the Bond girls, they're always falling for 007, even if they uh, belong to the other side. Do you think it's actually possible to fall in love with the guy on first sight when he's acting as arrogant as Bond? <laughs> um, well, if, when is he arrogant? Uh, pretty much all the time. <laughs> well, uh, if he is like Daniel Craig, with a great sense of humor and uh, self-deprecation, behind this arrogance, I could, yes, I could fall for him. Mm. Well, Lois Maxwell played that part for uh, completely uh, 14 times. Could you imagine doing the series that long? Uh, 
wow, that would be amazing. I'd love it because um, I think as an actress, a lot of the time, you know, you, you feel a bit like a gypsy kind of going around the world and, you know, rocking up on a new film set with a new bunch of people. You, you forge these incredible relationships, but then, you know, two, three months down the line, you leave them all behind and then, you know, you might never see them again. So it's really wonderful to have this kind of continuity in my life whereby I get to go back to this yeah. family every couple of years and work with people that I really love. It's like a stock company in, in theatre, actually. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, like it's great, circus. yeah. Okay. What was the first Bond movie you ever saw? Uh, I was 11 or 12. I saw Moonraker mm. with uh, my father. And uh, I was blown away. And I, 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 I remember being very attracted to Joss, the villain. Oh, <laughs> so already you were <laughs> exactly. uh, going My for the My destiny was written on stone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all I need to know. Thanks Thank a lot.